Volume check 2-1. Let's do a little networking 102, and this one is going to be about VPNs. And yes, I'm going to be drawing, and no, there really isn't an S at the end of that. VPN, a virtual private network. So let's dig into it. You have a Synology NAS. This is a continuation of 101, by the way, so I would suggest watching that. And the pickup for that is that you'll notice that you cannot access your Synology NAS outside of your home network using IP addresses. So let's, let's kind of dig into that a little bit and how you can use a VPN to fix that. So you are at home and you have a router and your Synology NAS is probably connected via Ethernet and then maybe you have a laptop that is connected with Wi-Fi. So all devices on your router, even if you, if you connect through a network switch and maybe you have a phone or a smart fridge or whatever, those all connect to the router and they become part of your home network and your router will actually give all of them an IP address. So let's say you can use your one from, you probably know your Synology one already, you figured it out in networking 101, but let's just say for example, it's 192.168.1.1. 20. What this means is that every device on your network is probably going to start with these first three numbers, 192.168.1. That's a very common one. Yours is, could be totally different, but this is probably the most common one. So your laptop might be 192.168.1.30, for example. And then maybe you have a phone on the network, and that one is dot four zero. If I can draw four, that's pretty close. And it's connected through Wi-Fi too. So what this means is, like in the last one, I could get on my laptop and open a web browser and type in the IP address of my Synology NAS, and I'll get to Disk Station Manager, right? It'll automatically try and access either port 80 or port 443, depending on whether I typed in HTTP or HTTPS. And these IP addresses that we're using, these are known as private or local or internal IP addresses. So that just means that these are IP addresses for a router. And if you type them into a web browser, what happens is it's going to look on the network for devices with those IP addresses. It doesn't go out to the internet to look for an address. <clears throat> so this is pretty nice, right? And because the nice thing about this too is let's say that my laptop or computer is connected via Ethernet instead of Wi-Fi, you're going to get a full speed connection to your Synology NAS. So it's going to go full speed with that beautiful line I just drew. What that means, so if your network is capable of one gigabit Ethernet, which a lot of them are, and that means all your cables and your router and whatever connections you have in between your computer and your NAS can do one gigabit Ethernet, you're going to get that full one gigabit Ethernet speed, which is really like 120 megabytes a second, I think. I always forget how that stuff works. Um, yeah, so that's a really big advantage. The other advantage is no one can access your Synology NAS like this. This is only available to your internal network. So nobody outside in the internet world can type in this IP address and access your Synology NAS. They have to be on your home network in order to do that. But there's a little bit of a problem, right? Let's just say you are at home, or sorry, let's just say your Synology NAS is at home, there's your NAS, but you are at the airport. That almost fit in there. So here is your computer. Oh man, that's really bad. That's, that's pretty good. That's kind of what a laptop looks like. So you're at the airport. So here's what's going to happen. You, your NAS will still have its IP address, but your laptop is actually going to get a different IP address. The airport router is going to give your laptop an IP address. So let's just say that it's 12.12.12. Um, .12. It won't be that. It'll probably be longer. But let's just say that it gave you the IP address of 12.12.12. .12 .12. All, all devices that end up on a router will get the IP address from the router, and that will be its private or internal or local IP address now. What that also means is that, remember, you don't have a way of accessing your NAS. That's just not going to work because if I type in the IP address of my NAS, that 192.168.1.20 address, if I type in that IP address, what's going to happen is it's just going to look at the airport's um, it's going to look at the airport's network and see if there's a device here that has that IP address, which there very well could be. Um, but it will not access your NAS because your NAS is not on the same network. So we need a way of putting them on the same network, and that is going to be a VPN. And I'm going to talk specifically about tail scale because that seems to be like the best and easiest way of managing VPNs on a Synology NAS. So you can go to the tail scale. I'm sorry. I, this is not a tutorial. This is just kind of like you should hopefully kind of understand how the VPN works when you're doing a tail scale tutorial because the installation is pretty simple. So let's just say you've got your home router and your Synology is there and you install tail scale. And then you are at the airport and you've got your laptop here and you've got tail scale here as well. 
devices can actually be connected to more than one network at once. So it's not very easy, but I guess you could hook up an Ethernet cable from your Synology NAS to the airport's router. Um, they're probably not going to want you to do that, though, so you won't be able to access it that way. So what we can do is create a virtual network. And when you turn TailScale on on your Synology NAS and your laptop, you have to make an account and you'll get a web browser interface for managing that network. But what's going to happen is TailScale is going to give all of your devices an additional IP address. So maybe your laptop is 10.1 and your Synology NAS is 10.2. You still, your Synology NAS is still part of your home network. Your laptop is still going to be part of the airport network while it's there. But in addition to those IP addresses that they have, all those IP addresses that they have still work, they're going to get an additional TailScale IP address. And what that means is that when you're on your laptop, you can type in 10.2, maybe you're doing HTTP colon slash slash 10.2, and that is going to access your Synology NAS. And it's going to access it like you were at home. You're not going to get the same speed, but you will still be able to access it in the same way. So let's say you installed Nextcloud on port 7000, you can still type in 10.2 colon 7000, and you, it'll get you to port 7000 where your Nextcloud install is. Um, your alias will also still work, so you could type in 10.2 slash photos, and that will work. Your IP address is going to be longer than that, but just, just for an example. And the cool thing about TailScale is you can actually use machine names. So in, in the TailScale interface, you could rename your Synology NAS. Let's just say that you had a 4-bay NAS. You could just name it 4, and then you could type in 4, and it'll bring you to DSM. Or you could do 4 colon 7000, and it'll take you to Nextcloud if that's the port that that's on, or you can still use the aliases. So TailScale makes this really easy for you to do. So now you have, you've got a connection to your Synology NAS, even when you're not at home. And this connection is private. That's what the P in VPN stands for, right? Private, that is, oh man, that is such a bad P. Is that a good P? That's okay. So that means on your TailScale network, remember, only you have access to your TailScale network. So you're, de you're deciding what devices will go on your TailScale network. You can add your phone, you could add someone else to your TailScale network if you want, that's all fine, but it's a private connection. So that means nobody, you know, if there's somebody else at the airport or another coffee shop or whatever, they do not have any access to the devices that are on your TailScale network. Only you have access to that. So that's really cool. That's a great security measure, right? Because that means nobody can try and get into your DSM and brute force a name or password, and nobody can expose a vulnerability. You know, if there was ever a Synology vulnerability, they can't access your Synology NAS, so they wouldn't be able to take advantage of it on your Synology NAS because you're just using a VPN to get in or you're using your local area network when you're at home. And another thing to note too is, I, I, I'm gonna write the N, I guess, that's the networking part too. You get the networking part of it, right? Is that it's connecting, it's making a network of all your devices that you decide to have it on there. And TailScale is very easy to install on multiple devices. So if you've got a phone, any other computers, whether it's Mac or Linux or Windows, it's very easy to install. And then also link it up to your own private network. But the other thing that you can do too is you can actually share. So let's say that you had a Minecraft server on your Synology NAS, and that's on port 25565. By default, that is the port for a Java Minecraft server. You, let's just say that this is a friend's computer, they can just install they can just install Tailscale. You can actually share this device with your friend's computer, and then they can use the IP address of your Synology NAS, um, of your Synology NAS's Tailscale address. And that is how they can connect to the Minecraft server. And here's the cool thing about Minecraft. Minecraft, actually, this is kind of true for a lot of programs. They don't always use ports 80 and 443 by default. That's for web browsers. But if you're in Minecraft, it will use port 25565 by default for Java Minecraft. So you don't have to type in that port number. You can just type in the IP address of the Synology NAS, and it's automatically going to look for that port number. But yeah, that is the gist of how a VPN works and how you can connect it up to your network. The last thing that I should brush up on, I'm, I can't do a full thing on VPN security, but I'm sure if you have a VPN, you're used to something like NordVPN or private internet access that gives you a secure connection. So if you're at the airport, people can't take your data. I'm not a security expert. I'm just a hobbyist. I don't know everything about VPN security. But what you were looking for, you are able to do that sort of thing. It is called an exit node. Wow, I wrote that E very badly. Exit node. So what an exit node will do is it will route traffic. Let's just say you're on your laptop. It'll, write, it'll do encrypted traffic from your computer to whatever router you're on, but it'll make it go through the Synology NAS. So that's probably a little bit of a compli way, complicated way of doing it. Basically, you would set your Synology NAS as the exit node, 
and then when you're on your computer and you're on tail scale, make sure that you set the exit node to be your Synology NAS. So you have to set that up, so you have to look through Tailscale's documentation. But once it's on an exit node, that basically means it doesn't matter what router you're on, if you're on an airport Wi-Fi, a coffee shop router or whatever, it's all going to be securely encrypted and go through your Synology NAS first. Um, that would be a whole different video on how VPNs work in that way, but you can look that up. You can look up what an exit node is, how that works. Um, yeah, but basically when you're using a VPN like NordVPN or something like that, and you're saying, hey, route my traffic through a server in London, basically all your traffic is being encrypted and hitting their, hitting one of their computers somewhere in London. So in this case, this will just hit your Synology NAS wherever your Synology NAS is first, and that is how the security will work there. Terrible explanation, but look at an exit node if that's what you are interested in doing. But yeah, so that was networking 102. So networking 103 is probably going to be about using, that's right, a reverse proxy. And if you're wondering what that does, that is what lets you use your own .com or .net or .xyz URL, any custom URL domain name. That is how a reverse proxy works. It is the probably the most insecure way of doing this. You can always use Quick Connect. Um, Synology actually has their own version of getting a private, uh, not a private, of using a URL, like a .com. You, don't, you can't use any URL you want. They've got presets for it, but they do have a way of doing it. So those are two things to look at too is Quick Connect and then look at Synology. I think if you look up like DDNS, that is what will come up. But next time, we'll see if we can do reverse proxies.